In this final video, we'll be showing you how to complete your sale on our website after the conclusion of an auction. Winning bidders will be notified by email, typically within 30 minutes of the close of bidding. In that email, there will be a link that'll take you to the My Account page to begin the checkout process. Alternatively, you can click on My Account after logging into the website. Here you'll find a yellow box that states you have pending lot purchases to settle, as well as a link to start the checkout process. Click on the word here to start the checkout process on the website. The first page you'll see provides a quick summary of your pending purchases. In this case, in the Benzie, Manistee, and Wexford auction, we have two lots that we've won, and we still need to verify our deed info and download our paperwork before we complete our process here. We have an outstanding balance of $14,597, and also clicking details will show you a quick summary of the two lots that we've won in this auction. We're ready to move forward, so we go ahead and click the checkout button to proceed. On the next page, we get a detailed breakdown of how much our winning bids are, the buyer's premium, the summer tax for the current year, and the deed recording fee for each lot. This gives us a subtotal as well as a final total amount owed for this entire auction. We'll go ahead and click confirm and continue to move on to the next page. The next step is reviewing your deed information. This is a very important step, so you want to make sure to pay close attention and enter accurate information here. By default, my deed information is automatically filled out on this screen, whatever I had entered in my user account previously. If I decide I want to add more people to my deed information, I can do that on this screen right here by clicking Edit Deed Info. Let's say I want to add another individual to my, lot in, uh, to my deed information. I would select a single individual and then choose whatever applicable. In this case, let's do a single woman. When adding another individual, you're going to have to choose a tenancy. The two options are tenants in common or joint tenants with rights of survivorship. You may want to do a little research to understand the differences between those two and select whatever is the best for your situation. For this example, let's choose joint tenants with rights of survivorship. And then I'll just enter a name. And then email and phone number. And then address. I'll go ahead and add the party to the deed. And now I see both people listed, myself here, and then my second individual. By repeating the same steps we did in the earlier video with adding deed info, we can also choose a business or other entity from this screen, or a married couple. If you're choosing a married couple, by default you'll want to select tenants by the entireties as the tenancy, and then enter both the first person's name as well as the second person's name all in one entry so you'll be entered as a couple on this uh, deed information screen. If you happen to see a message that states that editing is locked on this screen, you will need to just give us a call and we'll be able to assist you with any changes that are necessary on your deed information. For this example, we'll go ahead and finish up with just the two individuals listed here and then click confirm and continue to move on to the next step. Next, we have the buyer's affidavit portion of the checkout process. This is a PDF document that you'll need to download on your computer. This needs to be returned to us within the five business day window, same as the payment. It's a very important step and your sale is not complete until we receive this paperwork. So please make sure that you're paying just as much attention to this as you are the payment portion. You're gonna click on that orange link to download the buyer's affidavit and go ahead and save it to your computer. I'm just gonna choose my desktop for example and I'll get this opened up so you can see what it looks like. The first page here is going to detail the step-by-step -step process of what you need to do to complete this form, as well as where to mail it to. There's also an option to complete this form electronically using an electronic notary. You can do so through notarize.com, where you'll just upload this entire PDF and then complete the digital process with one of their electronic notaries. And then you can just email the digitally notarized paperwork to cashier at tax-sale.info. This is only available if you complete your electronic notary through notarize.com. Otherwise, you can use a traditional notary to complete this process. 
you would have to print out the document, uh, make sure you print out all pages that are included in that PDF, and then take it to a notary. A lot of times banks have notaries available to sign documents such as this. You can also do a search on the state of Michigan website to find a local notary. Uh, you will need to have valid identification with you in order to complete that process with a notary. They will then sign the paperwork after watching you sign it in front of them in their presence. And then you can take that original notarized document and mail it to us um, either alone or with your payment. On the second page, you're going to see all of the lots that you've won, as well as how you planned on deeding those. So in the first lot, we do see the uh, example person here listed as a single man. Uh, the second lot, we have an example business listed uh, as the deed information. If that looks correct to you, then go ahead and initial right below in this spot. A little further down, there's going to be a couple check boxes for payment method. If you plan to pay by credit card, you can check the first box. If you plan to pay by wire transfer or certified check, you can check the second box. Or if you're mixing the two and, and doing kind of a combination, you can check both boxes if necessary. The terms of sale are listed below. And then finally, there are three initials required to agree to those terms of sale. Further down, we have the payment breakdown uh, for the lots that you've purchased. Next is the buyer's affidavit. Please make sure you read through this carefully as well as the terms of sale earlier in the document. This is a contract that governs your purchase, so please make sure you read it carefully before you sign it. This page does need to be notarized as well. If you are deeding to any businesses or a trust or anything other than an individual or married couple, then you will also see this affidavit of entity ownership. This will need to be completed and notarized as well in front of a notary public. And then also the schedule of entity ownership, which lists out any uh, shareholder, officer, partner, member, or other parties that have a interest in the company. Uh, those names and addresses need to be listed here. Now that we've downloaded the buyer's affidavit, we can continue on to complete the checkout process. On this page, if you plan to make a payment by credit card, you can do so right through the website here. You would just click pay by credit and it will take you to another page where you'd enter your credit card information as well as your billing info. Uh, this only works if you're paying the full amount by credit card. If you're trying to make a partial payment by credit card, you will need to call us to do that over the phone. So you'll wanna use that 1-800-259-7470 number to give us a call and we can help you out with a partial payment. If you plan to pay entirely by certified check or by wire transfer, you can just click pay by other here, which is what I'll do for this example. This is going to detail the payment options you have. If you're sending by certified funds, meaning you're going to your bank and getting a cashier's check, this tells you who to make it out to and where to mail it to. You can include your check with the notarized paperwork. They can be in the same envelope. That's totally fine. They're going to go to the same place and be processed the same way. So no worries there. If you plan to send a wire transfer, this is the information for our bank that you'll want to use with your banking institution. Just please make sure you do not mail anything to this address. We do not receive mail here. This is only used for wire transfer. And finally, there's a reminder that the buyer's affidavit and payment must be received within five business days of the sale. Otherwise, the sale is subject to cancel. Uh, we do take that deadline pretty seriously. So please make sure that you're able to get both of those elements into us within that five business day window. If you're having any troubles whatsoever or you need um, you know, any help with this process, feel free to reach out to us by email or by phone. And finally, you just go ahead and click finish. This is going to take you back to that original page and give you a green check mark under deed verified and affidavit downloaded, which basically means that your checkout process is complete on our website. And all that's left to do is make that payment if you haven't already, and then send in the notarized paperwork, either digitally or by the mail. If you are mailing anything into us, whether it's a check or it's paperwork, we definitely recommend using an expedited and trackable method such as USPS Priority Mail, FedEx, UPS, something that's going to give you a tracking number and guarantee you a delivery date. 
If you send it regular mail, oftentimes these arrive late or they may possibly get lost and there's no way to track them, especially when you're dealing with a certified check that's very hard to cancel or replace. You really want to make sure that you're sending this in a method that is going to get to us and be able to be tracked. Once we've received the paperwork and payment, your sale is then considered complete. Your steps with us are now finished, and the only thing left to do is submit your property transfer affidavit to the local assessor. You can actually find this if you go to my account. Down here under useful forms, you'll see property transfer affidavit. This is a standardized form that is used throughout Michigan, and you can just submit this to your local assessor to make sure that the future tax bills are in your name and sent to you directly. You will notice under exemptions, there is something that mentions transfer by redemption from a tax sale. That is sort of leftover from an old system. This is not applicable to this situation, so do not check this box. It is not exempt. Once you've submitted this to the local assessor, then all that's left to do is wait for your deed to arrive in the mail. Typically, that happens within four to six weeks. Um, sometimes it can take a little bit longer than that, up to eight weeks. Sometimes it is actually even quicker than that, too. It just totally depends on the county and how long it takes to get things through the register of deeds and so on and so forth. Uh, these deeds do exchange hands a few times in different places before they make, them, make their way to you. So please be patient with us as we get everything processed. We do ask that you wait until you have the deed in your hand before you make any permanent changes to this property. Until that time, the sale is not fully complete, and we do ask that you just exercise a little patience before you start making any major renovations. That's about it for this process. If you have any other questions or need assistance with anything, feel free to reach out to us by email or phone, and we'll be happy to assist you during normal business hours Monday through Friday. And otherwise, good luck and happy bidding.